We've all gone to heaven. And the Lord said, I'm going to have a news conference today. And the theme of it's going to be why. And I'm going to give you a chance to ask why I allowed what I did. Or why I did what I did. Or why I didn't do what I did. Or whatever your why is on the list. Mm -hmm. And it comes your turn. What would be your number one why, God? Why, God? Well, I'll tell you what I think the most common would be. God, why did you allow suffering? And I'm going to try to preach on that today. It's a difficult subject. And I can't cover it all, but I will give you some insights I think will help you. Let's start off. Our text will be in Romans 8. But I want to read 1 Peter, who has something to say about suffering. 1 Peter chapter 5, he's talking about the assault of our adversary, the devil on God's people and says the devil he resists those that are verse 9 steadfast in faith knowing that the same affliction is the common universal problems we Christians face the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world it's universal suffering is universal but the God of all grace, I love the, that term, the God of all grace hath called us into his eternal glory Amen. by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. After that, you have, oh, this is too bad this is here, but it's in this After that, you have suffered a while, you may be perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. So we see some insights there to suffer. Now let's turn back to the great Romans 8. And I preached through this whole chapter not long ago. But I want us to see the three groanings of Romans chapter 8. And let's begin reading with verse uh, well, I'm going to pick out some verses, then we'll come back and read it all later. First of all, verse 20, Romans 8, 20. For the creature, created creatures, was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him that has subjected the same in hope. And then verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and prevaileth in pain, pain together until now. Verse 23. Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, and we ourselves groan within ourselves. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. Verse 26. Yeah. Likewise, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which we cannot utter, which cannot be, be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what's in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now there's tremendous truth yeah. inside yeah. in those verses. And I hope they'll help you today. The age old question. If God is so good, if God is all powerful, if God is all knowing, if God is all loving, as 
The Bible claims him to be. Why does he allow bad things to happen? That's an age-old question. Why does he allow, I'll give me some examples, terrorist attacks, war dead and wounded, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, fire, famine, drought, all over the world. The Indian Ocean had a tsunami in 2004 that killed 200,000 people. Disasters are worldwide, constantly taking thousands of lives. And people are crying out, where is God? Where is God? Why does God allow suffering? I remind you that wisdom is seeing things from God's perspective. Amen. Let me give you an example of man's perspective, if I could. And since we just observed 9 11 anniversary, it's kind of inspired this message. But I want to give you an example of a man's perspective that he wrote shortly after the 9-11 disaster. And he wrote a local newspaper editor. He heard Adrian Rogers on the radio or television, and it made him extremely angry. And it provoked him to write the newspaper. And this is what he said, and I'm going to quote that letter. Quote, Christians claim, he wrote, that they have an all-powerful, all-knowing God Amen. who knew what's going to happen on September the 11th, had the power to protect innocent human beings and uh, human life, but he didn't. They claim he did act in some small way to comfort people. But they can't have it both ways. Either their God could act and choose not to, or he didn't have the power or the will to do so. Either way, their God is not so all-powerful after all, or all-loving. And his logic goes on, if God were good, he would destroy evil. If God were all powerful, he could destroy evil. But evil's not destroyed. Hence, there is no God. End quote. Now, how would you respond? Well, personally, I have no word to turn to but the Bible, Amen. the Amen. word of God. Amen. There's so many precious, sincere people that are struggling with lower heads, enduring suffering and confusion. Some have different responses. Some turn to spite, rebellion against God. Some turn to anarchy, looting, burning, shooting, and all manner of depravity. With many broken hearts, many broken hearts have blasphemed and cursed God, shaking their fists in the face of God. Thank God all their some that's humbled themselves and turned to God with greater faith. Amen. But others keep on asking, why did God allow this? How should Christians react to things they have no control over. It's true there is a great mystery to suffer. Why is there suffering? It's a hard question to answer. But I want to give you the number one reason, all right? Suffering is the fruit of death 
It's the fruit of sin. We live in a world that's been affected with sin and its consequences. Romans 8 says the whole creation groans and travails in pain. Listen to it groan in hurt and, and other things. Listen to it groan. It's groaning because of sin's curse as a result of man's sin. The Bible says, and I remember hearing this as a boy and saying, why? That rain falls on the just and the unjust. That's true. People who love God with all their heart, faithful to God, faithful to church, faithful to time, loving, serving God, are amongst the greatest sufferers on earth. It's been well said that the greatest saints, and you see it in the Bible, the greatest saints and the greatest sufferers, such as Job, such as Joseph, such as the Apostle Paul and so forth. Look again at Romans chapter 8 and be looking at these verses. We see a concept of groanings here. It appears three times in Romans 8. There's the groanings of creation, there's the groanings of the Christian, and there's the groanings of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit himself. Now these three groanings, I think, unlock the mystery of suffering. I'm going to give you three points. Number one, there's the power, power of sin in the groanings of creation. The power of sin in the groanings of creation. Look at creation. Everywhere you see sickness and disaster and storms, fires, earthquakes, and calamities of every description. All creation is growing, pressed down with signs of grief and distress. The word grown here is like labor pain. When a woman is in travail in the birthing of a child. Now, people are quick, so quick to blame God for everything. Blame God. Where is God? He doesn't care or he doesn't have the power to do anything about it. I've heard that so much, I'm sick. They say, well, there's no God at all. Many turn to what, so that's what made an atheist out of it. But let me boldly make a statement right here and now. And I don't have any reservations about this statement. God is not the author of chaos or sin or pain or something. He's not the author of it. And I'll take you back when he created the earth, the world. He made it sinless and he made it perfect. He evaluated it and said it is good. And he made creation absolutely free. Why did God create man with a free will? He's not a dictator. He's not forcing man. He gave us a free will of choice. Now, God wanted men, number one, he gave us that choice, that ability in his own image, so we could love him back. He loved, chose to love the decision. Love is a decision. And he decided, I'm going to love this creation called man. And he created him with the same capacity. Not to love as much as God, of course. He'd have to be God. But to love God back. God wants to love, for he is love. And he wants to be loved. You need to know that about God. He wants you to love him. So he created man with a free will. 
because he wanted man to love him. True love cannot be forced. Genuine love has to be a decision from one's own heart. Now, God created you with that power of choice. He gave you the power of choice between good and evil, did he not? Amen. Good and evil. But the highest good there is, is love. That's the highest good. The greatest of these is charity or love. God allows evil, but he did not create evil. See, he does not destroy evil, but instead, he gave his only son, Jesus, Amen. to die on the cross in order to defeat evil, Amen. to defeat Amen. sin. The Bible said Jesus was made sin. And when he took our sins upon him on the cross, he paid the penalty in full. And the holy justice of the holy God was satisfied. Amen. 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 Well pleased. Amen. And when God saw the travail of his sin, yes, praise the Lord. The pain and suffering. Our salvation came as a result of the suffering of Jews. That's right. One aspect of it anyway. So there must be good and evil in order that we have a choice. If there wasn't good and evil, you wouldn't have a choice. And you'd be like a robot. Yeah. You'd be like a robot. Now, first of all, Adam sinned. That was his free choice. And he brought all the whole creation. He was the dominant one. He was the first one in the in the tier of creation. The human creation. Now all the other all the other systems of creation came under him. So as a result, Adam brought all creation down with him. Look at Romans 8, 21. The Bible calls this act of bringing creation down the bondage of corruption. The bondage of corruption. Now, do you, do you want to know why? There is pain and suffering. It's truly because of sin. Mm -hmm. It causes sin. Dr. D. A. D. D. Uh, M. R. Uh, D. Uh, get mixed up. He said he was watching on television the great earthquake in Mexico City which was the largest city in Mexico. And I don't know if it's the largest one in the world, but could be. I don't remember now what it is now. But back then, it was probably the largest populated city in the world. And it came on the television. And Dr. Dehan, great radio preacher back to the Bible, he pointed to the television and he said, pointing to the disaster, that is the courtesy of S-I-N. And he was right. He was right. The courtesy of sin. You can look and you can see that sin's bondage, bondage of corruption. There's a curse, number one, on the animal kingdom. Adam sinned and God cursed the serpent, Genesis 3.14. And the entire animal kingdom fell under that curse, and that's why species prey upon one another. Number two, there was a curse of the mineral kingdom. Also, John 3.17, or 3, Genesis 3.17. And God cursed the ground. And as a result, we have deserts and wasteland and vast areas that are uninhabitable. Number three, there's the curse of the vegetable kingdom in Genesis 3.18. And as a result, the world has become a garden of weeds. That's a result of curse. 
Why? Because this curse will is to help you remember the consequences of sin. And without it, you wouldn't remember me. It wants to promote a desire for deliverance that comes from God. So this curse that's on this world and on man will not last forever. But at the present time, Roman 8, 20 said, we are subjected to the same hope. Yeah. We have a hope. One day the Bible said the desert will bloom as the rose. Mm -hmm. The lion and the lamb shall lay down uh, together. Habakkuk 2, 14, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. That's a hope. That's a hope. We have this blessed hope of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, we see the power of sin in the groaning of creation. Number two, we see the problem of sin in the groan of the Christian. There we see that in 823 again. 23 keeps popping up. And not only they, but ourselves first, the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> Even we ourselves grow within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of the body. So we see being saved. Right now, you're not provided with some immunity uh, for pain and suffering. I wish you were. But we're not. We haven't escaped the curse of sin. And the whole world is under sin's curse. This virus of sin is universal for everyone, everywhere, including you, including me. Someone asked, well, why should I suffer for Adam's sin? I agree with the preacher who said, forget about Adam. you got your own sin to worry about and so forth. We've all sinned. Yeah. Come short of the glory of yeah. God. Now, Jesus died, and he was called the second Adam. Because yeah. he come to win back all that Adam lost. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And yeah. Brother Clary, to give us a lot more with it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But he come to destroy Adam's curse. And that's in the salvation package. Yeah. Yeah. But we haven't cashed it in yet. Look at the Romans chapter 5. Let's back up a couple chapters here in Romans 5. And uh, I love this. Look here, look at these verses. We're justified by faith. And you can circle the word peace. We have peace with God. Peace with God. You have to have peace with God before you have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Plus nothing minus nothing. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Oh, that's why I love to work. Wherein we stand and we rejoice. Here it is. In the hope of the glory of God. We have a hope. And not only so, but we also, uh oh, in tribulation also, knowing tribulation, worship, patience, that's endurance, perseverance. The patience and patience experience, experience, hope, that's the end result. Hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Thank you, Lord. So we see Christians are experiencing at the same time both peace Amen. and tribulation. That's right. Tribulation means pressure. Pressure. Like the pressure of crushing grapes in the vat or crushing olives in the olive oil press to bring oil out of it. Now God the 
crush grapes bring forth what? Crush olives brings forth oil. And so they're types of character that God wants to develop in you through fresh earth. Good character. Good character. So God looks to develop that. How? If we trust and obey God, then there's more good going to come out of it than bad. If you trust and obey God, what happens? More good to come out of it than bad. Amen. A diamond is a lump of coal under pressure. Remember, God is sovereign. He's in control. He can do what he wants, how he wants, where he wants. He's sovereign God. Now, the words luck and fair fairness is not in God's vocabulary. Right. Right. But faith is, Amen. trust is, Amen. and providence is. Yes, Tribulation, my brother and sister, is part of life. Amen. Amen. Part of life. We saw that at 823, but look also 2 Corinthians 4, 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8. And uh, it's amazing some of these treasures that we find in the Bible. Chapter 4, verse 8. We are, this is the testimony of Apostle Paul, the greatest we've ever yeah. written. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. I'm not wanting to give up. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not, the, 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 not destroyed. Always buried about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a lot of scars. That the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. If you would have saw the Apostle Paul, you'd seen the evidence of beatings and whippings and shipwrecks and so much suffering. All of his whole body was just a, 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 a book of suffering. Suffering, suffering, suffering. But what came out of it? The greatest grace preacher in the Bible. Amen. The one that preached on joy, even though he was in prison. Amen. So we see tribulation teaches us patience. I think God values patience. Remember the patience of the soul, the Bible says. <laughs> we need to learn how to endure and how to persevere. Amen. We have to learn that. Crisis are going to come. Disasters are going to come. But those things don't make a person. But they'll reveal what a person made out of. Yeah. What are you made out of? That's good, right? When you get squeezed, what comes out? Cursing or praise? Complaint or thanksgiving? The same S-U-E, the same sun that melts the butter, hardens the clay. What makes the difference? It's the oil in the butter. Oil is what? Type of oil. So are you going to get hardened? Or are you going to get melted? And I mean melted in a good way. Uh, we must face the fact. Face the fact. I said this would be a difficult sermon for me to preach, especially because I live with this every day of my life. As a Christian, you are going to suffer. You are going to suffer. I have spells every day where I don't know if I'm going to live or die. I'm telling you the truth. Sandra probably thinks I'm exaggerating, but. I just don't, uh, you know, you get the feeling that this may be your last breath or you're about to have your last breath. Yeah. And I have to pray about it. 
And uh, if God isn't finished with me, I need your prayers to keep on keeping. Because it'd be a lot easier to be in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. And just uh, hope, hope, I just pray for God's perfect will to you. Every, God, your perfect will, mm -hmm. even if it means suffering, trials and tribulations. See, we can't escape. People are trying every which way to escape suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. Some use booze. Some use dope. Some try divorce. Some try to uh, quit and run away like Jonah. They, some want to quit church. Preachers want to quit preaching. Many are becoming dropouts simply because they're trying to escape the pain, the suffering, the hardship, the trials, the tribulation. But that doesn't work. No. That's jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. You can't retreat and win. You can't resent and win. You can't resign and win. But what God wants you to do is to rely, meaning trust him, depend on God no matter what. Job said, when nothing was left but his wife, he said, though he slay me, still I'm going to serve him and my flesh will rest in that grave in hope. <laughs> that was Job's faith who was the greatest suffering man there ever was up to that time. Suffering. The Bible said, remember the suffering of Job. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Romans 8.25 says, we are saved by hope. And thank God there is hope. You need hope to get you through suffering. Trials, disappointments, heartache, broken heart, lost loved ones, tragedies. You need hope. Hope so important. Hope is the opposite of despair. Despair is giving up. If we uh, if we have hope, then we have strength and courage. Someone said that hope is shining from an empty tomb. You know what that means? I serve a risen Savior. And he can turn hurts into hallelujah. He can turn tears into diamonds. He can turn every midnight into a glorious sunrise. He can turn every Calvary into a resurrection. Praise God, the Bible said we are saved by hope. Three groans from Romans 8. We saw that and the power of sin, the problem of sin and creation, the problem of sin in the Christian in closing, the promise of strength in the groaning of the comforter, the Holy Spirit, 26 and 27 of Romans 8. And it says this. Likewise, the Spirit help of our infirmities. That's weaknesses, sicknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered. I like that term up there. He helped. He helped our infirmity. That's why. I pray every night, help me, Holy Spirit, help me with my infirmity. And he that searcheth the heart knows what's in the mind of the Spirit. That's that. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He knows the perfect will of God, yeah. even when we yeah. don't. And he makes intercession. And then, of course, Romans 8 28. 
He makes all things work together for good within the love God called for his purpose. So we see this wonderful truth that we don't have to bear our groanings alone. Amen. Thank you. We're not alone. Uh, bless God. He put his Holy Spirit in salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He put his Holy Spirit within us. Amen. And in us, the Holy Spirit is doing what? He's actually our prayer partner. Yeah. The greatest one you could have. Amen. 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 When I remember Jack House taught this in pastor school years ago. He said, when the Bible says two or two shall agree, said that other one could do the Holy Spirit. He's all that you need to pray. Amen. The Holy Spirit. I thought that was very true. I've never forgotten. And I rely on the Holy Spirit. That's my greatest prayer. So you here today, you know I count on you as prayer. You know I do. But number one is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. See, when he makes groans for us, we can't help. Yeah. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to say it. That's right. But as I used to ask my mother to petition my dad, because I didn't know how to talk to him. I was scared to talk to him. I didn't know how to say it right. But my mother did. She was a great intercessor. But my mother's heart between the church of the child and the father. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. Sam is my best friend physically. But the Holy Spirit is my best friend spiritually. The Holy Spirit, my best friend spiritually. Of course, he incorporates Christ in it all. You know what I mean. Yeah. He's a wonderful prayer partner. He's the very best. Because he enters into suffering with us. Yeah. Yeah. You don't say, that's good luck. Yeah. No, he enters into us. Yeah. He's there in the furnace of fire with us. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 He enters suffering with us. He may not spare us from the furnace of affliction, but he joins us in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I believe that. Amen. And whether he spares, or whether he shares, he's there. He Amen. He's there. Now I'm closing. How often we pray, and we pray out of what to say. You get to the place where I don't know what else to pray. But praise God, the Holy Spirit. He does it. He, and we need help. We need help to pray. Pray right. Yeah. yeah. We'll pray the right things. And the Holy Spirit's there to help us. He helps us. And that's when God steps in. That's when God steps in. The greatest intercessor there is is the Holy Spirit. Verse 26. The Holy Spirit helps with our infirmities. That means he bears the load too heavy for us to carry. He inspires, he guides, he energizes, he sustains us in our praying. A lot of times you quit praying way too soon. <clears throat> keep praying. Keep praying. And keep praying for the Holy Spirit to take over and pray for you, pray with you. <laughs> he prays what we can't utter. And he calls it groaning. Groaning. I was going to play. A soundtrack of a woman delivering a baby, but I, no. I guess I won't. <laughs> but that's that word there. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit groans. It speaks of a deep longing. Adrian Rogers and some other preachers were in a prayer room with Percy Ray, Dr. Percy Ray. And uh they didn't know how to end the prayer session. And they were scared to death to 
to stir Brother Ray. He said, Brother Gray would be over there laying on his face. And all he was doing was groan and groan and groan. He was at that place. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit groans within us. He's bearing our burden. He's saying what we can't say. And he incorporated it after groaning the word comforter, which means he comes alongside to strengthen you. To strengthen you. To strengthen you. You can say, why does God allow suffering? You might say today, I don't understand it. I don't understand why. I don't understand what's happening. But you know what? You don't have to understand. You don't need explanations. You just need trust. Trust in God. Trust in God. You need to live not by explanation, but by the promises of God. Amen. I have the Bible. I have, and I choose to believe. Amen. Though I don't understand it. Brother, there's a lot I don't understand. Seems like the more I learn, the dumber I get. I felt that way growing up with my dad. I got dumber, he got smarter. There was a time I thought I knew everything, and my dad didn't know anything. Yeah. You ever been to him? Teenager. But the older I got, the dumber I got, the smarter he got. Amen. And I thought this week several times. I wish I could go to my dad and sound mine and discuss the Bible with him. Someone, you know, uh, I, I really would like to have a pastor. I don't have a pastor. I would like to have one. 72 years old. I'd like to have somebody that discuss theology. There's some great theologians. There. Most of them are gone. Most of them are gone. I have some dear friends in the ministry, but I don't think I don't think they can take me where I want to go. But anyway, that's where we depend on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, sure. yeah. Open that up to me. Open. Don't you think God wants you to have yeah. that desire yeah, right. to know the that's truth, true. to live by the truth, yeah, to walk right. in the, the truth? We're not here to play church or practice religion, are we? Aren't we here to meet with God, to hear from God, to draw close to God? I mean, we're on a journey. We're pilgrims. We're pilgrims and strangers here. This world's not our home, my granddad said. We're just a passing through. My home is laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We're nearing the shore. We're getting nearer with every breath, every heartbeat, every day, every hour. We're getting nearer home. So we're going to get there. Just trust God. If, he, if you're still grieving, he's not done with you yet. When he's done with you, the breathing will stop. Yeah. And you'll be called home. The soul will leave the old tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And go to be with the Lord. Yeah. Absent from the body, present from the Lord. Amen. I'm trying to help you be sure you're saved. Yes, sir. Be sure you're right with God. Nothing between my soul Amen. and the Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that what I fail to say, the Holy Spirit will say between the line between the people here today and their pastor. Thank you for the good listening today. I, I saw some good attentiveness today that people were listening. And Lord, thank you for those 
that wants the truth. And I thank you for those that walk in the truth and agree with the truth. And Lord, we're all the we're all the subjects of suffering. But Lord, you're greater than the suffering. And you have a purpose for all things. And you will make it work to good for our good and your glory. Save those that are out saved, please. Convict them more. And those that are backslid and different, cold heart and lost their joy, I pray they be restored. And those, dear Lord, who are just trying to keep on keeping on, revival, Lord. Give them revival in their soul. Fill them with joy and victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.